Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon, and it's evening here when I'm doing this. Um, just thought I'd do a continued video on splitting wood and talking. Just messages from my heart, basically. Um, getting my cathartic cardio exercise. Nobody knows what that word cathartic means, I'll tell you. So you can see here crack here and a crack there so that goes almost all the way through so I'm going to hit here first and then there and it'll split and I'll hit here and here and here so I'll end up with uh, six pieces of wood and I just did one and I ended up with probably six I'm guessing one two three four five six seven seven I'll, I'll get about the same out of this one so get a little bit of exercise a little bit of catharsis emotional release sorry about the Moving around. We did the count yesterday, 80 of these suckers out here. So most of them are about this size. Some of them are bigger. Those ones over there, quite a few of them are quite a bit bigger, and I might be able to I'll probably be able to do those. Because the first one, the very first one I started off with was a junky splitting mall, a homemade garbage splitting mall. We're about 25 inches across. They were huge, bigger than those right there. More like those size. White oak. This stuff is very stringy. It's about the same, not too much difference. All right, I'm going to go back at it. I just thought I'd do a video. Any thoughts? Well, I found what I call thinking rock. Suffice for me right now. A rock on the south end of the 60 acres. Kind of in the middle of my son's 30 acres. And a thinking rock is where you go and sit down and meditate and ground and earth and just pray and think about life. And so I did that two days running here. Ask questions and maybe you get answered, maybe you don't. But one thing that came to mind was one day, I was in a almost a daze for three days, a whole weekend, from Friday, Saturday, and then S day. Um, I'll sit down and talk about this. So I was in this, almost like a daze, a trance has come kind of, just kind of meditating, thinking about, I need to get out of here, I need to get my family out of the city. And then I was having teepees made by an Apache lady that I found a flyer for when I was up in Idaho. So she was up in Idaho. And I called the number and I had gotten an inheritance from an aunt and uncle that had passed away. And I knew if I didn't spend it on something, invest it wisely, it would be squ squandered away, just frittered away on nothing. Garbage at the store and Walmart and everything. So I made a deal with her to send her a bolt of fabric. And I asked her where she got it from. She would just have it sent me. She said, it's on Potomac Street. And I was like, that's right down, this, that's the next exit down from me. So I went down, talked to the guy, walked in, paid him cash. He shipped it up to her. And um, something textile, I don't remember. So she made two teepees, a 14 foot. I, I made a deal with her for a 12 foot and a 16 foot, because 16, you can pack it into the wilderness in Idaho, and there's lodgepole pine everywhere. So you can have one campsite with lodgepole pine hanging in the trees and another campsite a day's hike in. So I thought, that's a good escape thing, bug out plan. So that was my bug out plan. So as it turned out, she calls me one time. She goes, I'm, I'm just wanting to check with you before I do this. She said, I, I laid all the fabric out. I was very careful and measured it out. And I can make a 14 foot and a 17 foot instead of a 12 and a 16. I was like, yeah, go for it. So she did. I got a 14 foot out of it and a 17 foot teepee. One of the very few 17 foot teepees around because usually they're 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And 24 is about the biggest you can get commercially easily. You can make them bigger. You can make a 40 footer, but you have to crane to put it up. Okay, so back to the thoughts. Um, so I called her that, that weekend. I was had this just, I was thinking about, I got to get out of Denver. I got to get my family out of Denver. And I called her and she said, You know, I went for a walk yesterday and I asked a question. And she didn't ever tell me what the question was, and I never asked. She said, and the answer was, you can't save the whole world, but you must save the children, for they are the rootstock of the next generation. And that's kind of the answer for me. I need to make sure my children and my grandchildren are safe. And right now, that's that's a big one, real big one. So they're all here, pretty much. My one daughter is in North Carolina, got married and left the Ozark Plateau, unfortunately, but. They can drive back pretty quick. I hope they do. And other than that, they're all here, as far as I know. All the 
all my children, all my grandchildren are here. There are other children I know are here. So that's a blessing. There's, you know, issues and problems, yes, pray for us. Hurdles, obstacles, sins to face and whatnot. But um, other than that, you know, they're all here and they're physically safe. And I just need to pray for their spiritual safety now. And, it, you know, I wasn't there for from five years after the divorce at the house. Cause just didn't work out. They threw me under the bus and whatever. My fault, your fault, nobody's fault. Uh, no. Sorry, Big Jake. Okay, so anyway, um, that's it. Yeah, we bless everyone. I'm going to split this one and maybe one more. Yeah, there's one there. I'm going to get that one. It's easy. Close. I'm going to do three today, and then I'm going to call it good. I can stack these on the cart here in the front, right where I have my feet. I got one back there, and I'll get two stacked right there really easy. So, all right. Blessings on everyone. Bye-bye. Um, pray for one another and start getting serious about getting and doing something, changing, relocating. Because I've been going to tell you right now, two weeks, um, the message is, you know, election, all bets are off after the election. There's going to be so much civil unrest violence. They're planning for it. They're calling for it. Um, yeah, the 4th of July didn't happen, but, you know, BLM and all that, maybe something did, but not much. Yeah, they tried to take over Gettysburg, but whatever. Nothing really happened. Not according to what the word was, so... I think this is going to be worse. So anyway, I'm not going to make any prediction. I'm not going to try to scare you. If I'm a fear monger, I'm just saying, do what you can to get out of where you're at. If you want to get, if you feel the Lord telling you to get out, I think now's the time to do it. You know, three, three, three. If you wake up at three, 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 see through the number three, three, three. That means it's time to get in the ark, and this is the ark. I think everybody knows. I think that I believe that. So come to the O's Ark Plateau, Os Ark. It's a point of the spear. Jeremiah put the Ark of the Covenant here. Ark. Ozark, Ozark Indians, Ark Carrying Indians. Look up Ansa, Ansa in Hebrew. Look it up, A-N-S-A, -S Ansa, Carriers, Ark, Ark of the Covenant, Carrying Indians. All right, bye-bye. Yahweh bus, bye-bye.